The Paint Bucket tool is one of the most neglected tools in Inkscape, but it actually has some very useful and not so obvious features. And in this video, we'll give the tool a much needed closer look. And if you want to learn much more about all of Inkscape's many tools and features, be sure to check out my Inkscape courses, in which I explain in detail everything that Inkscape has to offer, as well as show how to use it to create various things like logos, icons, and game assets. I'll leave links to the courses in the description box below. The Paint Bucket Tool or Bucket Fill Tool is located here in the toolbox and has the shortcut U. And basically, we use the Paint Bucket Tool to fill in bounded areas. A bounded area is an area of a particular color or no color that is surrounded on all sides by objects of one or more different colors. If I just click somewhere in the canvas, nothing happens, and it says in the status bar that the area is not bounded. This is because the canvas goes off to infinity in all directions and isn't bounded by anything. If I click one of these shapes, however, it fills in the area because it's completely bounded either by the canvas or by one of these other shapes. What the tool actually does is, it stores the color of the pixel that I first clicked, then it starts to fill in all of the surrounding pixels that match the clicked pixel, until it reaches pixels that don't match. And it creates a new path over the area using the tool's color. By default, the tool's color is whatever color that we last used. We can see its color either by the icon next to the cursor or by looking up here. To change the color, I can click one of the color swatches in the palette. However, the tool also selects the last path that it created, so this also changes the color of the path. And because this is a separate path, I can go to the select tool and move it around. And now we can more clearly see that it stopped filling in the area once it reached pixels that didn't match the click pixel, such as at the boundaries between the overlapping objects. I'll delete this path, I'm going to make it so these two objects have the same color. Now if I deselect everything, I can go to the Paint Bucket tool and I can change its color. Then if I click one of these objects, it fills in the area of both objects because they have the same color. Another thing we can do with the Paint Bucket tool is fill in empty bounded areas like this area here between the shapes. This feature makes the tool very effective for coloring line art as we'll see a bit later. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, the Paint Bucket tool works in pixels. Because of this, the fill paths it creates never quite reach the edges of the filled area. To get a better result, we simply need to zoom in on the area, which gives the tool more pixels to work with. We can only zoom in so much, however, because if too much of the area is off screen, the tool won't fill it. Now let's take a look at the Paint Bucket tool settings up here in the controls bar. First we have the Fill By setting, which is by default set to visible colors. The Fill By setting tells the tool what to look at when filling in pixels, and visible colors tells it to look at all of the color channels of the pixels that it's filling in. So when I click one of these overlapping shapes of different colors, the fill doesn't cross the boundaries of the shapes. However, if I drop down the Fill By box, I can tell the tool to only consider a particular color channel of the pixels. For example, if I choose red, the tool will now only care about the values in the red channel of the pixels. If I now click this red shape, it fills in the entire area of the shape, but it also fills in the white shape underneath it. If I undo that and select the red shape, with RGB mode chosen here in the fill and stroke dialog, we can see that the shape's red channel has a value of 255. And if I select the white shape, we can see it also has a red value of 255. So with red chosen for the fill by setting, as far as the Paint Bucket tool is concerned, the pixels of both the red shape and the white shape are exactly the same. Similarly, if I click one of these overlapping blue or green shapes, it will fill them both, because both shapes have a zero value for the red channels. I can also do this with the green, blue, hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha channels. With alpha, all four of these shapes are fully opaque, so they all have an alpha value of 255. Because of this, clicking one of the shapes will fill in all of the shapes. Okay, next I have these three shapes that are different shades of red. If I put Fill By back on visible colors, and I click one of the shapes, it will only fill in that shape. If I wanted to fill in all the shapes, that's where the next setting, Threshold, comes in. The lower the value of Threshold, the closer the pixels of the areas must match in order for the tool to consider them to be the same. If I set it to something higher, like 30, and click one of the shapes, the colors in these two areas matched enough to meet the threshold, so they both got filled in. If I undo and set threshold to something even higher like 40, 
Now clicking one of the shapes will fill in the areas of all three shapes. The next setting is Grow Shrink By. First I'll undo the fill and I'll set Threshold back to the default of 15. To do this easily, I can simply click this button with the X, which resets all of the settings back to the defaults. Ok now if I set Grow Shrink By to a positive number and click one of the shapes, it fills the area and then it outsets the fill path by the Grow Shrink By value. So in this case, it outset it by 20 millimeters, and I can change the units of the value here. If I use a negative number, it will inset the path by that amount. This setting comes in handy when coloring line art as we'll see. Alright I'll reset everything. And finally we have this close gap setting. The possible values for this setting are none, small, medium, and large. And we can use it to tell the tool to stop filling in an area if it reaches a gap of a certain size. For example, I have these four shapes here that have some empty space between them. And between these two shapes is a gap. When closed gaps is set to the default of none, if I click somewhere in this empty area, it will fill in this part, then go through the gap and fill in this part as well. But if I undo that, I can change closed gaps to something else, and if the gap fits the chosen size, the tool won't go through it. Small didn't work, so I'll try medium. There we go. The paint bucket tool also has a few hotkeys that we can use. First if I fill in an area, then I hold shift and fill in another area, it will do the union path operation on both paths, which combines them into a single path. Next if I click and drag, it creates this red line along the path of the cursor. If I keep the line within bounded areas, when I release the mouse, any areas that the line touches will get filled in, though it isn't always perfect. This feature is useful for filling in areas that have a blur or a gradient. For example, if I click this object with a gradient, it will only fill in the portion that contains pixels that match the first pixel, while of course taking the threshold into account. But if I click and drag over the object, I can fill in a larger portion of it. If I hold down ALT as I click and drag, I get the red line again, but this time when I release the mouse, it only fills in the touched areas that match the first pixel. And with this, I don't have to worry about keeping the line within bounded areas. Finally if I hold CTRL and click an object, it simply changes the color of the object to match the tool's color. It doesn't create a new path there. This could be useful if I fill in an area, then fill in another area and change its color, and if I wanted the other path to match, I could hold CTRL and click it. As I mentioned earlier in the video, a great way to use the paint bucket tool is for coloring line art. The line art can either be vector or it can be an imported bitmap image like what I have here. And before I start coloring, I want to keep the line art on top of the colors. To do this I can go up to the layer menu, choose add layer, name it something like colors, and for position, I want to choose below current, then click add. Now if I go to the paint bucket tool, I want to set the grow shrink by setting to a positive number. Something like 5mm should work. This will prevent the gaps around the edges from showing. Now I can click an area to fill it and change its color. And if I have some areas that I want to always be the same color, I can fill one of the areas, then hold shift and fill the other areas, which will combine them into a single path. Now I can change the color of the entire path. And that's how we can use the paint bucket tool in Inkscape. Thanks for watching.